Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be talking about the Ubuntu release cycle, what the version numbers mean, and the various different flavors of Ubuntu. And I'm on a great page where I'll post a link in the description below too about the life cycle of Ubuntu by Canonical. First off, we'll start out with the version numbers and what they mean. So a lot of version numbers, and we'll focus mainly on this graph for now, people ask questions about this, and it's fairly easy to understand. If you just look up from the bottom of the chart, we start at 1404. So what does that mean? As they show in this up here, it's yy.mm, so year and then month. So if we use that format, now we understand that anytime Ubuntu releases a new version, it is actually telling us what year and what month it was released in. So for example, we have Ubuntu 1404 LTS. That means in April of 2014, this version of Ubuntu LTS was released. And then for 1604, that's April of 2016. So on so forth until you get to here, we see that there's Ubuntu 20.10 or 21.10, the latest. So this is in October of 2020 in October of 2021. So I want to explore this graph a little bit more because it's very interesting. A lot of people get confused also about how long Canonical and Ubuntu support their releases for. So we'll first take note of is they don't actually show the interim releases. These are the ones that are in between a long-term and a short-term supported version. So in this graph, we only see three here in the interim. There's also three in between any given set of long-term support editions. They just don't show it in this graph. I guess it's going to make it too convoluted, but it's something also nice to notice that there are version updates in between if you like keeping up with the latest and greatest. In Linux, they release a new version about every six months. So focusing back on the long-term support edition, so that's the LTS. So what this orange means is that we have hardware and maintenance updates for a total of five years on every single long-term support edition that's released by the Ubuntu team. So for example, here in 2014, when Ubuntu 14.04 was released, we would have support from 2014 in April all the way to 2019 of April. And then you actually get another five years of support in the extended security maintenance, which allows for high security risk patches to be made. And that comes with every single long-term support addition. Now, something else that you'll notice is long-term support is only released every other year on even years. So 2014, 16, 18, 20, 20, and 2022 is the next release. So coming up here in April of next year, we'll get that release of the new long-term support edition and it will be supported for five years up until 2027 and extended maintenance until a little over 2032. This is one of the reasons why Ubuntu is such a great distribution to pick for your production environments. Not only do you receive a stable environment and a stable operating system that utilizes the Linux kernel, but it also offers this long-term support, which is very necessary for a production environment. So let's continue on now that we understand what the interim releases and the long-term support releases mean to various editions of Ubuntu. The three editions here that are mentioned are server, desktop, and core. And as mentioned, server is really for production environments where you're running various different applications as servers, such as a web server, SSH server, a network access storage device. This is a headless, meaning absolutely no desktop environment, just a command line interface and very minimal as far as a, an operating system goes. Then you have the desktop version for your everyday web browsing and multimedia playing experiences. And finally, you have stuff like Core, which is made for embedded systems and the internet of things. Finally, the last thing I'm usually asked about when it comes to Ubuntu is, do I have to use GNOME and what are the flavors of Linux? We talked about the various different editions 
that are supplied, but you also have flavors, which really are various different Ubuntu offerings with varying desktop environments and their own slew of default applications and or configurations. So we have KUbuntu, which is the KD Plasma offering desktop environment for Ubuntu. LUbuntu uses LXQt as its default desktop. Ubuntu Budgie using the Budgie desktop environment. Ubuntu Kylin, which is tuned for Chinese users. We have Ubuntu Mate using the simple Mate desktop environment. Ubuntu Studio, which is another flavor, which focuses on content creation in Ubuntu. So it has tools already prepped for you in order to suffice for your content editing. And then X Ubuntu, which is another minimal and lightweight desktop environment, XFCE. Make sure to check out the various different flavors. If you weren't aware of them for some reason, you might actually like one of these desktop environment offerings way more than the standard GNOME offering. And now you have a decent amount of knowledge about the various different editions, flavors, release cycle, and what some terms mean according to Ubuntu. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>